You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com as well as, of course, from the ever scintillating, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Glad to see so many of you are having fun enjoying the secret club, dare I say it, the coolest, perhaps the only, I don't know of any others, <laughs> secret club in the world of options. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, we do have to make that URL slash secret club. It's coming, listeners. In the meantime, you can go check it out, slash pro, of course, if you're in the secret club. Hopefully you enjoyed the Q&A earlier this week. we got Ajis coming up tomorrow. You get the live throughout the week. And one of you, one of you lucky cohorts is getting that cool options uh, trading crate coming your way. So a lot of cool stuff there. In the secret, you just got to learn the secret handshake. Then you too can join the fun secret club. Learn what the handshake is, theoptionsider.com. Slash pro is the place to go. And let's see who's joining us on ye old program today. By the way, psst, they both wish they were cool enough to be in the secret club. But no dice. I shan't teach them the handshake. I can see the umbrage brewing already. So first, let's go out to the land of Maine, the fortress-like compound. You know, he moved up there, listeners to isolate himself from the petty needs of the rest of humanity. And yet still, once in a while, a contagion can make its way to his doors. Uncle, excuse me, the Rock Lobster, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Feeling a little bit under the weather today, but he still soldiered on to make it onto the show. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program, sir. It is good to be back on said program. Yes, COVID found its way to my little rock in Maine. It is hard to believe. It's those freaking clam pirates. I told you. You sent me those pictures. They're like five feet from your door. They clearly brought the plague to your door, sir. No, I, I think it was uh, my kid going to summer school or to a summer camp that, that did it. But be that as it may, uh, hopefully uh, things will work out okay. If there is a contagion, it usually is the fault of the children, yes. <laughs> they spread plague far and wide. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's probably what it was. Blame the kids, and if not the kids... You have the unique excuse of clam piracy, sir. Not many people can can claim that. So, so that cl- cling to that. Enjoy that. If I could claim clam piracy, I would do it all the time. It's just a pretty fun thing to say <laughs> as we keep on rolling out into the hinterland where he is hale and hearty. He is none other than Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program. How goes your battle against the non-existent clam pirates on the Fox River, sir? Hailed and hearty, never tardy. 
Uh, we do not have that problem on the Fox River. We have no clam pirates. Uh, well, I guess it might be because we have no clams, but uh, maybe that's why. Clam piracy to deal with. I think it's because you folks in St. Charles exterminated them all with brutal efficiency about a century ago. So I think that's what it is. One of the lesser known sure, of eras of the history of St. Charles, the brutal clam piracy and extermination of 1906. Look it up, listeners, if you are so inclined, as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the trading block. And coming into Thursday's show, it's another one of these days we've seen pretty much every day this week so far, where most of the market seems to be moving in one direction, but not too aggressively. And another index decides to just do its own thing. <laughs> every one of these days, pretty much this week, we've had one index want to move kind of contrary to the others. Usually it's been the NASDAQ. Today, coming into the show time, we have the S&P up slightly about a tenth of a percent, NASDAQ up about a tenth of a percent. And it's the Dow deciding to take a break today off a little over a tenth percent. Again, Nobody really blowing the doors off in either direction, but still in one of these interesting days where the market kind of seems to be moving all over the place at the same time. Of course, all this kind of uh, shoulder shrugging, I guess you could say, is resulting in pretty much a lot of vol coming off the tape. Remember, not too long ago on the show, we were talking about, you know, it seems like the vol is propping up. It seems like maybe there are some other shoes waiting to drop out here. The market seemed like it was setting up for Something to come. It was bracing for a shock. And yet we never really saw that materialize. And so as a result, we've seen vol continue to erode. VIX had a 15 handle, listeners. Yes, coming into showtime. A 15 and a half. That's off a point and a half. You know, everyone who had a 15 handle in our poll, I guess your winner, winner, chicken dinner right now, of course, we've all learned to claim victory early in the land of vol because a lot can change between now and tomorrow's close, which is when that poll expire so if you haven't voted i know a lot of you have if you haven't voted head on over to add options make your voice heard right i have a feeling i know how you're going to vote right now question is will we close there that is of course the eternal question in the land of vol by the way pretty impressive breadth of choices <laughs> in that poll i'm just going to say that I'll, i won't give any more hints because we'll discuss it later in the mail excuse me yeah in the mail block and then uh vvix coming at the show time at about a 115 effectively unch from monday down about a point or so uh, VXX coming at the show time. That's catching back up on the erosion front. Remember, we talked for a while. Most of the month of July was kind of a wasted month for everybody playing the VXX erosion game. It flirted with south of 30 a few times, but it kind of kept reverting back up to close to it and never really got into gear on the erosion front. Making up for lost time this week. It's off two points from Monday's show, down to about a 26. So aggressive downside and vol Q at about a 16. That's, of course, the Vol of the NASDAQ. That's effectively unched from last week. Let's go back around the horn. Since he's under the weather, we'll start with him, lest he decide to uh, to fall asleep during the show. Mr. Mister Rock Lobster, sir, what is lighting up your tape out there today? Uh, well, you're right. We did see a little 15 handle. That was kind of uh, fun for a while, um, which I think is about the pandemic low. So, like a lot of weird uh, cross cross currents, I would say cross currents going around, slapping back and forth. Um, where and then now you have the infrastructure bill, where they're not going to pass the one point one unless they tie on the three point five trillion. Like all, all I know is, <laughs> I don't think the Fed has done Congress any favors the last fifteen years by enabling pretty much. Every uh, every spending uh, orgy known to mankind. So, <clears throat> but it looks like that might be a tougher sell then. So there might be no infrastructure bill at all, um, and no big spend. So again, lots of lot of cross current things going on. Um, but as of right now, I mean, you know, I think the market needs a little bit of a reason to rally at this point. Um, it being at all time highs or close to all time highs, and uh, <clears throat> and I think that's just I think that's just what we got. So we're just we're sit we're sitting watching basically spending orgies. <laughs> Let us know how your diehard libertarian heart really feels, sir. 
<laughs> uh, well, you know, it's just I, I just want to know where all the money's going to come from. I mean, I I get it. I get the fact that they're super happy about it, but you know, at some point, <laughs> you know, what, what, at some point, what are they going to do here? <laughs> don't you, don't you have to get the money? So that would be a great. They, they type- need the money. <laughs> they, they, we need to make the money before they can spend it. But now that I don't. That's never been a problem before. Why should that stop them now? It's never stopped them in the past, sir. Uh, exactly. But it's, I, that would be a great title for our show. I'm not sure if I have to give you the explicit tag for iTunes, though. It might offend some of our family-friendly listeners if we come out with an episode entitled Spending Orgy. <laughs> but a fun one, nonetheless. Instead, let's roll on out to the land of St. Charles, where they are, shall we say, a little bit tighter with the purse strings. No spending orgies in St. Charles. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, when you're not doing all that crazy spending, what is catching your eye out there in the markets today, sir? Well, you'll be happy to know I actually have spoken with uh, the former mayor, Rogina. Uh, there's a new mayor in now, but uh, he's actually assured me that uh, we, we have and will always have a balanced budget in St. Charles for their city budget. So you guys will be happy to know that. That's one city. I, I'm very happy. That makes me, you know, because they, they, they don't have to. They When they killed all the clam pirates brutally, they also stole all their treasure so that your town is funded for years to come, sir. Hey, that's how we make ourselves the pickle capital of the world from the clam pirate treasure that we that we took from raiding their plunder. Uh, but anyway, fast forward 100 years to today, and uh, we actually do have new all time highs again. I, I can't say I, I just have a hard time doing my my bit if it's only up four points in the S and P. But um, so we do have new all time highs, and so we just keep inching up, slowly, slowly, slowly inching up. And uh, I'll be the first to admit I was wrong with the VIX and my crystal ball earlier this week. I thought we'd have low 16s. I did not think we would see the 15 handle at all. Uh, but here we are. And uh, I think that just where we're at is that uh, we're, I could see us continuing to go up, but I think you just need to really trade this market like it is a new all time high because when looking at it, there's no resistance when we're in all time high territory. And at some point, uh, all time highs eventually aren't all time highs anymore. But with that being said, you have to have an understanding that there's nothing stopping it from going further. So people who are more momentum traders, this is their kind of market. Uh, the other things with which I'm looking at, Bitcoin has actually come back a little bit since Monday, uh, which that, that always makes me happy, just out of spite, I think. And uh, just in looking at where we are, uh, 10 years not moving too much, uh, but we're still kind of staying within the range with which we are. And so I think the market is just doing a lot of consolidation right now. Uh, I thought we'd have a bigger move either probably last week. Uh, but we still haven't had it yet. So um, I'm just playing my cards and then just hoping to where uh, I'm more long premium right now. And uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit more hedging of the time decay with the long premium that I have right now overall, of course, and uh, see where we go with it. Speaking of going, you're eliciting a lot of sympathy from the live crowd here, Mr. Rock Lobster. Options Queen says you hope she f- you hope. She, easy for me to say. She hopes you feel better, Mr. Rock Lobster. Mr. Nichols says he is sorry you've caught the clam pirate contagions. Look at you, sir, eliciting all this sympathy so early in the show. Must make you happy. It, it makes me very happy. Makes my heart warm uh, that the listeners care for me more than you do, Mr. Longo. Clearly, I just use you for show content, and then I drop you by the wayside. The listeners actually care about your your mental and physical health, sir, which is nice of them. Also got Nichols saying, uh, looking forward to some great shows today. You know what? Me too, Nichols. That makes two of us. So let's keep on rolling and see what kind of great show we can come up. By the way, I like that, Mr. Uncle Mike. You talked about raiding the pirate plunder in uh, in St. Charles. I like that. If we can't go with Mr. Rock Lobster's less family-friendly title, maybe you know there's always something catchy about raiding pirate plunder. Let's see what kind of plunder the market is raiding today. There we go. We'll tie it into the show that way. Uh, Vix actually... Doing some paper today, listeners, which is, let me just make sure that number is correct. That seems robust, shall Yes. <laughs> right now, the ADV has ticked down to about 431,000, but it's going to go back up today because already 411,000 contracts are on the tape out there. What is, what is trading it up out there? We got no 95s <laughs> going up 13, almost 14,000 times. That's the big trade, no 95. I don't know what's what's worth 411,000 contracts out there today, but it's something is tearing it up out there 
in Vic's land. We'll have to dig in a little bit more. Obviously, tune into to Vol Views tomorrow, listeners. We'll find out. And of course, right now is the moment when my system decides to be slow again and not give me that information. So we'll see if we can get it a little bit later. Spy at about 1.56. Million contracts, that's pretty light for SPY, but the ADB is also ticked down a bit lately. It's ticked below four now to 3.9 million contracts. The S also fairly light, just a little bit over half a million contracts. The ADB about one and a quarter million. The S usually this time of day is good for like three quarters of a million or so. The Q's looking pretty robust, 700,000 contracts on the tape. The ADB about 1.3 million. And small caps also looking pretty robust, 332,000 on the tape. The ADB is 644. My system finally decided to catch up with me, listeners. It, the most active contract in VIX today, 50,000 of the AUG 16 puts. You know, that's, I was hoping for something a little bit more surprising than that. And about 34,000 of the AUG 17 puts, maybe a bit of a one by two or close to it put roll out there. So near term AUG puts, not that exciting. I like the 95s. That's, that's a little bit more fun. <laughs> in terms of fun, let's see how much fun is lighting up the most actives out there. Today, let's start out with, let's go on out to the most active out there. Okay, uh, number 10 today on a decently active day, cost you about a quarter million contracts to break into the top 10 today. That gets you to NVIDIA, number 10, number nine, Neil. And we got 347,000 contracts already jumping up, about 100,000 contracts already at number nine. Number eight, and number seven, the Symbol Twins back together, reunited like Voltron. Number eight, it is AMD. 372,000. Number seven, AMC, 397,000. Number six, Moderna. I wonder why they're in the top 10. 417,000 contracts. Number five, another name we haven't talked about in a little while, getting Mimi again with Clover Health, ticker symbol Clove, at 461,000 contracts. Number four, we've got Micron. Micron putting up some paper today. 478,000 contracts. Let's look really quickly where Micron is today, off nearly six bucks or 7.6%. So taking a bit of a drubbing out there in Micron land. Number three is Tesla, 922,000. Yes, I said number three for Tesla. I mean, something has usurped its number two spot. And also decent paper for Tesla, closing on a million contracts, but that's only enough for number three today. What's number two? It's Palantir, listeners. Palantir back on fire out there today with almost just a tick under one2 million contract what's the stock up to today 24 and three quarters it's up 10 almost 11 percent or about two and a half bucks today so palantir what a saga this one has been on still well below its highs of the year let's see it got up to 45 dollars geez back in february of this year so far cry from that still listeners but getting some of that juice back up oh Two bucks and change today. So a nice little pop for Palantir and good for 1.2 million contracts. Number one, it's the big dog saying, I don't care what all you meme kids do. I'm the big dog again. 1.3 million contracts for Apple out there. So some robust paper on the tape out there today. Putting it mildly. Let's look really quickly. Palantir looks like it's the most biased. No, actually, yes, yes. 75% of Palantir's paper coming on the call side of the ledger apple also looking pretty call heavy 71 percent and then uh 73 percent for neo out there everybody else is pretty much in the 60s and let's look at some of those other names we're talking about out there today earnings season still coming at us hot and heavy i'm pleased to say we got earnings move earnings move results and earnings season reports hot off the presses from our friends over there at orats right before showtime so we'll break through some of those live now they'll be available on the site pretty soon probably after the show our producers and editors are busy doing other stuff right now. Let's see what we have this week. Monday, AMC, what, a name you may have heard of these days. <laughs> Tuesday, Coinbase, another name you may have heard of. Uh, Wednesday, we had Wendy's, Neo, eBay, and Bumble. A hot IPO. Seems like they kind of fell off a little bit, but we'll see what's going on with them. Today, we got Diz and Airbnb. Disney, that magical company they had problems with, with, with uh, ESPN. Their parks were closed for a year. They didn't release a movie for the better part of a year, and yet their stock just did nothing but go up. It's impressive how they managed that feat, I guess, solely off the strength of Disney+. Plus, Because <laughs> nothing else they had was really doing anything. But that's a conversation for another day. Looks like we have the earnings move stuff, earnings season stuff. Looks like it has not been updated here yet, so I guess we'll have to wait for updates on all of that good stuff. So I lied to you, listeners. There's no uh, no updated 
earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports. Maybe we'll come back to those with that a little bit later in the show. Let's keep on rolling now, and we'll see if uh, if I can get my producer to put the reports in, then we'll be good. Otherwise, we'll uh, keep on rolling. Yeah, let's just keep on rolling into an early kickoff for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. I will admit Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster accuses me sometimes of uh, choosing names that just because they have fun tickers. And I don't choose these. This is the eye of Sauron. I have no agency there. But sometimes when they throw some names at us, sometimes, sometimes a name sticks because it has a fun ticker. So let's do that right now. One of the first names our eye of Sauron brought us today. Not the most sizable, but it does have a fun ticker. This is Brinker International Inc. They own Chili's and Maggiano's. And the ticker symbol is EAT, E-A-T. <laughs> that brought a smile to my face, so I thought, why not? Let's bring that one up here on the show. EAT, by the way, also a name we haven't discussed on the show before, so that always makes it fun. We've got EAT right now, $52.10 off, about 2 bucks or about 3.5%. A year ago, this thing was trading $34.5. Obviously, you own a lot of in-person restaurant chains. The past year was a bit of a challenge. But they're looking pretty good. They're up about 50% on the past year. So that's not bad. It's been pretty much a almost straight up trajectory. In fact, they they were looking pretty active even a year ago because they were trading 34 and a half a year ago on August 12th. But by September 2nd, they had rallied up to almost where they are right now, up to $47. And then they kind of uh, hovered there for a while. And then they kind of sold off back to about 42 on October 28th. And they began another long odyssey to the upside all the way up kind of culminating in March, March 15th, at about $78. So they actually got much higher than they are right now. And then maybe rise of uh, more more Delta. Maybe maybe they heard the Rock Lobster has. I don't know sure what it is, but the stock's been selling off pretty much ever since March, pretty steadily. It's gone back down from 78 back down to where we are right now, about $52 and change. So even though it's up net on the year, it's actually down substantially from where it was this time in March. So an interesting year here for EAT, the apex, definitely around that March time frame. What did our Eye of Sauron find? Oh, Mr. Rocklopsy, you'll like this. Again, not the most active of names, so this is a pretty sizable trade out here. We found 2,475 <laughs> of the SEP 42 puts. Again, that's so why I said we're at a 52 right now. These are the SEP 42s. Going up for 53 cents, pretty much right on the bid, listeners. So they're pretty much hitting it. They actually got a little bit better than the bid, which is impressive given this name. It doesn't do a ton of paper. That's a 62 vol, if you are indeed wondering. And the stock was pretty much actually a little bit higher when they put this up. The stock was about 52 and three quarters. And if you're wondering, is there any earnings juice baked into this? The answer is yes. Because they got a half a buck for a put that's $10 out of the money. Uh, so with not that long to go, there are earnings between now and expiration. Those earnings are on August 18th. So Mr. Rock Lobster, first off, do you enjoy eat? Do you attend their various restaurants? I'm not sure if there's a Maggiano's or a Chili's in Maine, but if so, uh, do you go to them? And then B, uh, what are your thoughts on this somewhat tasty line in this answer? Uh, you know what? There's, I don't, all the restaurants that I used to go to in my town, uh, they can't find anybody to work in them. So they're all closed. Uh, they're only open like three days a week. And it's horrible. Um, so the short answer is, <clears throat> uh, yes, you do find names that um, you like, because uh, this is eat. So you're just like saying eat. And um, <clears throat> at least uh, the way I look at this one, um, uh, where am I? Uh, I'm just I'm just pulling up the chart for a second here. Um, you know, you do you do you feel like this is a? <clears throat> I feel like this is kind of a line in the sand put. Um, wasn't this stock down to like ten bucks during the COVID 
badness. I think uh, I'm looking at the two year chart now. Yes, eat was nine dollars. <laughs> so clearly, chilies and Maggianos and all those things. You could have eaten a lot. Of, you could have eaten a, eaten a lot of the stock for nine bucks, sir. Yes, yes. But anyway, I think this is a line in the sand put, and uh, you know, as history is our guide on these, probably do okay. Now that people are going back to restaurants. All right, we'll keep an eye on these. Do you want to eat this one yourself, listeners? Let us know here as we keep on rolling into our next name. These are because there actually wasn't a ton of paper lighting it up out there today, listeners. I know, shocking. But there wasn't a lot of ton of, of sassy, interesting, compelling paper. So we thought we have a freaking metric ton, I think is a technical term, of paper that we want to go back to that we have to keep an eye on. So we're going to do some of that now, listeners. We're going to go back first to all the way to July 12th. And we're going to go to Union Pacific, ticker symbol UNP. And uh, UNP right now trading 226 and three quarters. And over the past year, it's been interesting. A year ago, it was trading 191. It got as low as 171 and a half. That was back in October. It had a pretty short-lived dip. It went from about 210 on October 16th, sold off to about 171 and a half on October 28th. And by November 16th, it was trading 207 again. So weird, aggressive sell-off and almost immediate recovery out there in the same. The rest of the year has kind of been vacillating around these levels and slowly moving upwards, up about 18% of the year, up to where it is right now, 226.78. Let's see, what did our Eye of Sauron highlight for us here as we keep on rolling here? We've got the AUG 200 puts. Uh, we have, they went up on the time, 8,732 for a buck eighty three. And then we saw another thousand of them going up for a buck eighty six. These were through the bid at the time, listeners. The stock at the time was two eighteen and a half. So someone drew a what we termed on the show, I think technically, quote unquote, it's not too bad. <laughs> these line in the sand puts. We didn't mind them. We didn't hate them. They were about eighteen and a half dollars out of the money. They got a buck eighty to do it. They were about a month and change out. So it wasn't the worst line in the sand put that we had seen. It was a level that could be blown through. Obviously, like I said, it got down to 171 and a half, but not the worst. Obviously, these have not expired yet. But right now, like I said, spoiler alert, the stock here is at 226. <laughs> so these 200 puts don't appear to be in a large amount of danger with about a week and change to go here. These never really got into trouble, actually. The lowest they got down to was 214. That was about, it was like a few weeks ago. So never really threatened the 200 strike. And now stock has rallied substantially at 226. Go figure, Mr. Rock Lobster. These puts are still open. So again, once again, the line of the sand puts seems to be working out well this year, Mr. Rock Lobster. I, know, I remember you said at the time, I think your technical term was, these are not too bad. And so far, at least, seems like it's working. Yeah, I think uh, also you've got some of this. Uh, I think Biden wanting to move to rails, more public transportation and, you know, charging people for mileage. They drive their cars and all kinds of green ideas. So uh, I could see the rails catching a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I, I think this is a pretty decent put. I mean, it's it's a solid 10 percent out of the money. and. You know, the, the easiest rule to follow trading stocks is you buy them low and then you sell them when they're higher. So <clears throat> these puts, you know, and it, it, it was a pretty decent yield, um, almost 1%. So, um, yeah, not a bad, uh, I don't think this was a bad, uh, I don't think it's a bad sale. No, and it looks like they are working out pretty well. Looks like the total we have here. I can't see the total on the day, but it looks like they had about 10,000 going up out there. So not a bad clip at the end of the day, Mr. Rock Lobster. You're talking not quite 2 million, but about 1.8 million or so. If they, let's say they averaged around a buck 85 or so for these puts. So not bad. Not bad at all. I think you would take that. That would buy you more than your proverbial girlfriend's Ferrari. You could buy her a Ferrari and yourself a house <laughs> and have some leftover for, let's say, the kids' college fund. So all sorts of good stuff going on there. As we keep on rolling, let's go back a little bit farther now, listeners. Let's go to 
SCI. Let's go all the way back to June 28th to SCI. This is Service Corp. They provide funeral goods and services. You might think that's a boom business in this uh, current environment. And judging by this chart, you would be correct. <laughs> a year ago, 48 bucks. Uh, they're up about 17 bucks on the year, about 35%. They're trading about 65 right now. They got as low, looks like, as 39.10. That was back in September of last year. But pretty much been mostly up ever since with a few surprising fits and starts. Mostly jolts upward. Like it shot up from about, let's see, in uh, July 23rd, 58 bucks by like August, early August, it was trading 65. So it's had some aggressive moves upward along the way, which you would not associate with the Funeral Home Services Corporation. Uh, what we noticed at the time back on June 28th, these people may regret that, that those aggressive moves up. Doesn't sound like this person thought those were coming either, because at the time back on June 28th, Mr. Rock Lobster, we profiled what we termed a very aggressive call overwrite in Service Corp International. At the time, we looked at the AUG doubles. Papers sold about 5,000 of them, 4,900 of them. For a buck, right on the bid, they crushed it. Uh, again, about 5,000 times. It was about a 21 vol. And we thought this was kind of an interesting choice. Fairly, fairly aggressive, obviously, because it was only, the stock was 53 and a quarter at the time. So it was only a buck 75 out of the money. And also, there were earnings coming up about exactly a month later. Uh, so there was every chance that this thing could blow through that strike. And we said at the time, you know, if, if this thing holds where it is, and then they're getting about 2% through August expiration, which was all right, decent, not the best, not the worst. But looks like Mr. Rock Lobster, that those earnings were good or just in general, the overall climate has been good for SCI because this stock has blown well past that double strike. I said like now about $65 almost exactly today. So $10 through that strike. So they effectively sold their stock now at 56 bucks. So they're out about nine bucks to the upside. Now, I should say, I always put it out there when you sell a covered call and it blows through your strike, you should be happy because you've won. And in this case, this person did win. Obviously, they probably have some stock. Let's just assume that. <laughs> and so they have stock. So they got about a point and three quarters on the stock itself, plus another dollar on the option. So they made money on this trade. But again, going back to what we were talking about yesterday on our psychological episode of Options Bootcamp, they also clearly left some money on the table. And that's probably what they're going to be thinking about right now. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on what we termed was a very aggressive call, right? But then it turned out to be perhaps a wee bit too aggressive, sir. Yeah, you know, we, <clears throat> I just, I, uh, just not a lot of dollars. You know, like writing calls is, can be, I think in a, in a, a qualified money account, I think it's great uh, because, you know, you just get taken out and you do it again. Um, but I think in a non-qualified, we got taxes and all the rest of that crap. Um, it can be damn annoying. So I think in this case, uh, I think they're a little unhappy, to be honest. I mean, they're happy. They made money, but it can be a little grumpy, I think, on this one. Leaving nine bucks on the table. Yeah, it's better than losing money on a trade, certainly. But people always, when they leave money on the table, they pretty much count that psychologically as a loss. In fact, we were talking about it yesterday in our trader psychology episode. It seems like people almost feel worse about that than they do about losing money straight up, which to me is kind of weird. But yeah, that's where we are. Speaking of weird, let's go really quickly back. We had a little bit of a technical snafu, but now they are back here. The earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports hot off the presses. From our friends over there at Orats, let's crunch through them really quickly here. Some big names popping off this week, like I mentioned at the top of the show. Let's go out to Baidu first. They were before the bell today. Ticker symbol, obviously, Baidu, B-I-D-U. Uh, they were trading at about 165 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 4.7%. And I'll guess this, they delivered about 4%. So pretty close. They didn't get deliver 0.2% or anything crazy like that that we've been seeing out there of late we also had bumble remember them the hot ipo of late they popped off after the bell yesterday they went into their announcement 4767 they were pricing in ooh, a pretty lofty 9.2 percent now obviously we don't have much of a track record on bumble so take some of the previous numbers with a grain of salt but they were expecting 9.2 percent and they delivered get this listeners 4.3 percent so once again Dramatic underperformance from an earnings vol perspective. 
Let's go out to Neo. Neo has always been kind of a reliable deliverer of volatility. They popped off yesterday after the bell as well. About 44 bucks is where they were going into their announcement. They were pricing in 7.1%. So anything over 4 or 5% these days is pretty rich. They delivered, they were just say pricing in 7%. And even Neo, the kings of volume, the kings of busting into our top 10, usually can deliver some price action. They only delivered 2.5% listeners so yet again wah wah whammies <laughs> no love for the vol out here let's see if ebay ebay can save us here ebay yesterday after the bell as well they were pricing in 5.7 percent and they delivered oh and they by the way they were at 68 dollars pretty much exactly and they delivered 1.2 percent <laughs> I can go on, listeners. Fossil Group, yesterday after the bell as well, they make all those watches and smart watches you're probably familiar with. They were at 12, almost 13 bucks. They were pricing in, wow, 12.5%. That's rich for a maker of watches. And I think you can probably guess how this one turned out. Yeah, they got annihilated. 2.5% is all they delivered. It, you know, it's just nonstop here, listeners. The aggressive crushing of volatility out here. I mean, outside of Nike, the end of last cycle and a few others, I'm hard-pressed to think of names that even came close to outperforming <laughs> their earnings straddle here. Let's go to, oh, there's a hot one here, Palantir, before the bell here today as well. They were at 22 and a third. This one I think you can finally think of. You, given what we talked about earlier, you can probably guess how this one turned out. Uh, they were pricing in 8.4%. They delivered nearly 15%, 14.9%. Now, obviously, these are, kind of immediately after earnings when these snapshots are taken. So throughout the day, that frame of reference, that amount of movement could change. But in the immediate blush, Palantir. So there we go. One name out of how many I just talked about here. <laughs> One name managed to out-deliver and outperform a little bit on the earnings vol front out here. Other than that, listeners, not a lot of love here for any earnings vol here. Let's look really quickly here. Yeah, Cyber, IQ, A, or A, with a lot of these ones out here, but the big ones are these ones here. So that means, of course, the season is not exactly shaping up super robust, even though it's not looking as terrible as previous seasons. So maybe we could take some solace in that. Remember, previous seasons, we're talking about 50%, 60%, 70%. So far, this season is shaping up at a whopping 82%. That's the closest we've been in pretty much since the pandemic, I believe, to really breaking even on a season. And so far, again, this this week is light, but so far this week is looking all right. It's close to the green and breaking even. Outside of the big names I mentioned, obviously a lot of the smaller names must have done a little bit better. The early weeks of the season, though, were still pretty blood red. 74% for week one, 56% for week two, and 66% for week three. So, yeah, still a lot of blood red on the screen, but there's still a lot, of more, a lot more names to come. So we'll keep an eye on this, but once again, the the trend is not your friend if you're out there in the earnings buying front here. As we keep on rolling, by the way, you guys can find all that for yourselves, theoptionsider.com. Click on the options, news, and articles tab, and you'll be off to the races. Meanwhile, we are off to the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, let's get to it. I alluded to it at the top of the show here. We got a hot and heavy one out there in the land of Twitter. It's only got, got about 24 hours or so to go, so if you haven't played, I know a lot of you have. Get out there now. And we asked you at the beginning of the week, say, hey, it's time for you to play along with us on the Volview's Crystal Ball panel. And try to guess where VIX is going to close at the end of this week. Gave you four ranges to choose from. We have VIX below 16, which seemed kind of aggressive when we posted this because the VIX was around 17 and a half. A VIX of between 16 and 17 half. A VIX of 17 half to 19. And a VIX north of 19. Mr. Rock Lobster, before I reveal how our audience is shaping up, where do you think our audience is coming down right now, sir? Um, I'm going to say... Somewhere between what sixteen and nineteen, that whatever that number is there, not the below sixteen, but the next, the next one above sixteen to seventeen half. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, uh, Mr. Uncle Mike. I believed you said that same range as well. Are you still there, sir? Or you think the audience has evolved? Uh no, I think I'm going to say I'm still there. 
I will say this has been one of the more evenly distributed polls maybe that we've ever done here <laughs> in in the history of, of our questions of the week here. We have a lot of people coming in, and even as more people come in, the numbers stay roughly 25% across the board. In fact, it was almost exactly 25% for each not too long ago. As of right now, VIX 16 to 78, 17 half has ever so slightly pulled into the lead with 27.3%, followed by a tie for number two with VIX 17 half to 19 and over 19, both of those at about 24.8%. And the actual current winner in terms of where VIX is right now is actually the loser at 23.1%, which is nice. It shows people aren't just flooding in at the end to, uh, to try to guess where it is at the end of the week. They're playing throughout the week, which we like. And you guys have about less, a little bit less than the day, I think. I'm actually a little bit more because it's to the close tomorrow. So got about 24 hours and change to make your voices heard out there. Speaking of your voices, we always give you folks in the secret handshake club. We bump you folks to the top of the list, just like Mr. Unlimited. He says, I asked about a month ago if the September 2030 VIX call verticals were too early to buy. And you advised me they were. So I didn't buy them. They were at 180. Now they are at 120. Should I buy a few verticals now? Well, first off, Mr. Unlimited, you're welcome for saving you some money there. That, that's, just, that's just the service we provide there. And now B, Mr. Rock Lobster, this is kind of what, what were the strikes here? 2030. Okay. Interesting strikes. A buck 20 for a one month 10 point vertical in VIX, Mr. Rock Lobster. Does that one float your boat? Um, you know, it's funny because I'm just looking at September, but I, what I do is I pair like that call spread with it, with an in the money put for VIX when you have this much contango. So uh, I'm looking at the SEP 20, 30 and 18 put for around 240. So, I mean, yeah, if he wants to buy it and look for a pop, sure. Um, but, um, cause normally he does of all pops, but, um, I think at this point, you got it's an awful lot of contango value in there. It's hard to make those calls move. So, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> anyway, that's I don't think it's a bad price, the twenty thirty. Um, but um, I usually buy a couple of VIX puts with it because a lot of times that's what that is what ends up paying. Even though the even though VIX looks like a relatively you know, low number. Your memory, you're buying the futures, not the cash. Indeed, sir. So, yeah, it sounds like you're on the more of the, if you're buying in the money puts, you're more on the continuing the fade trade and then having the call spread there as a kicker, Mr. Unlimited, rather than the primary focus of the trade. I, I get you. I get how you're thinking. Sometimes when Vic starts getting into these levels, it is tempting to put a little bit in the back pocket for a round. I'm glad you're doing it risk mitigated. You're not just buying the 20s outright. Uh, so that's certainly a better better play to go to the vertical route. <laughs> uh, but you're right. It is sometimes hard to fight against this, even though we did see a nice little pop in VIX just like a week and change ago as all other things were being held constant. We could certainly see some dramatic news overnight that could send it popping again. Uh, but yeah, that, that kind of pairing of some sort of VIX downside with the upside kicker. It's hard to argue against that right now. We got Mr. Luigi in the chat too, Mr. Rock Lobster. Everyone's got stuff for you. I guess they feel bad because of your corona. He says, I'm giving it a trial run. He's running a straddle swap on Airbnb. Wish me luck. Were you talking about straddle swaps, sir, in Airbnb? Um, was I? Um, uh, I do not recall. Um, I don't think I've ever heard you talk about a straddle swap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, though there it. You know, they're interesting trades when there's a lot of juice in the front. It's, uh, I would say for most, like retail, I think it's just a hard trade to manage. Um, but it, it, can, it can happen, but I think it's overall, generally, it's a harder trade to manage. If you're not sure what a straddle swap or any type of swap really is, it could be an iron condor swap or anything else like that. That's pretty much just buying one and selling the other. They're not retail trades. They're usually... They used to be quoted a lot down there when I was in the SPX. Usually it was some upstairs guy who wanted to see how the vol was shaping up. So they wanted to have some sort of run of this, you know, vertical versus that. Some nonsense swap that they would quote. It's usually that's where you see it. You don't really see them traded in retail accounts. But let us know, Luigi, why you, uh, why you love a straddle swap on Airbnb. And if so, how you are setting it up. All right. We got Mark Davis coming in through Facebook. A lot of times people, people come through a lot of other outlets for whatever reason, not a lot of them on Facebook. So whenever we see them on Facebook, 
I'd like to give them a little bit of love as well. Mark Davis wants to know, I was listening to the network, and it was mentioned that you could potentially mimic the same goal of levered ETFs, and he puts in parentheses 2X to 3X. How would you go about doing that if one wanted to mimic the returns of 200% of the S&P 500? Is it just a matter of buying two calls with close to a one delta? He also has a second question. Since I'm nice, I'll let him have two. He says, also, I haven't yet come across a show where taxes are discussed. Uh, Do options have the same long-term, short-term capital gains? One thing I always wonder is if I bought a call which expires in a year and I exercise the option after a year, then do I need to hold my underlying shares? I now have another year (laughs) only to be liable, excuse me, for long-term gains. Thanks in advance. Well, a lot to unpack here. Mr. Uncle Mike, you deal with taxes over there. You know you're not a tax expert. This is a, a pretty straightforward question, though. So maybe set Mr. Davis straight on the tax side. And then if you have anything to add on how you would go about constructing a 2X levered S&P 500 ETF, have at it, sir. Well, in terms of the taxes, I'm going to stay away from that one. Um, But in terms of the leverage as to where it goes, uh, there's a lot of ways in which you can build a levered ETF. And the thing you got to keep in mind when looking at a levered ETF is that they reset every day. So let's say you have twice the lever, a double levered ETF, and the S&P 500 goes up 1% on the day, and the ETF would then go up 2% on the day. So it goes from 100 to 102, let's say. And then let's say uh, what you want to do is um, continue to have double leverage, and then the S&P 500 goes down 1% on the day. That would mean that the double levered ETF goes down 2% on the day. And so if that's the case, then you're not going to be at 100 again. You're going to be a little bit below 100, and the S&P might not be the exact spot that you want it to be. So just understand that those reset every day. If you are looking to get double exposure in the S&P 500, uh, what you'll need to do is uh, you can do this a lot of different ways. You can uh, buy a bunch of out-of-the-money calls and have that add up to 200 deltas. You could buy two one-delta options or 100-delta options. You could do it or calls if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, there's a lot of ways with which you could do it. Uh, typically, the way with which if, I, if I'm looking to do something like that, I'll want to get whatever I feel is the most efficient mechanism possible. So in other words, if I feel that implied volatility is super high, I may sell a bunch more put spreads. I don't know if I would sell quite that many put spreads to create that, but that would be one area with which I would look to do. Or you can buy a bunch of call spreads if the deltas add up to 200 if you want to. So there are literally an infinite amount of ways with which you can achieve uh, a double levered ETF through options. Yes, there are, are many ways these are constructed. It's one of the reasons why I call these things Franken products because they are made many different ways. Some, sometimes they're done well, other times not so much. Other times they don't use options at all. They use other weird levered products and things, and it becomes a whole mess of craziness. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything you want to add here on the how you would construct your daily 2X S&P 500 and uh, anything you want to add on the tax front, have at it. Oh, um, taxes, um, you know, qualified account makes life easier uh, for that stuff. Um, uh, <clears throat> as far as the uh, levered ETF, I mean, just figure out what kind of delta you want and just buy the options. <laughs> so um, I think that might be easier. It's just easier uh, to develop it that way. But most of the levered stuff, um, uh, you know, you get that like that non-compounding effect and all kinds of weirdness. Um, so you don't have, you know, compounded returns and all the rest of it. So it's <clears throat> I mean, I think they're good for very short term trades. But ultimately, if you want the uh, if you want a lot more deltas, you just you just buy more options. Yeah, there's a lot of ways we could construct this kind of stuff. I think you heard two ones. We could probably do a whole show. on. Maybe that will be an interesting show to discuss down the road, how you can construct your own Franken product, but do it in a better way using options it's not a bad suggestion for a show mark davis and yeah short answer to your tax question is 
most of your options trades, obviously Mr. Rothlofter gave the best example, just do it in an IRA. You don't have to worry about this nonsense. But if you don't, if you're doing it in your typical trading account, most of your trades are going to come in the short term time frame because you're probably trading a lot of weeklies and monthlies. And those obviously aren't longer term. If you do, in your example, you say if you bought a call and it expires in a year and you wait more than a year to do something with that, then yeah, that would be a longer term type of game. There are some scenarios that fall in the middle ground with exercising and things like that. But for the most part, Again, and I'm not a tax professional, so take all my tax advice with a grain of salt. But someone who has traded an option or two over the years and seen how they are taxed when I trade them. That's pretty much how it works out here. Well, since we're talking levered ETFs, let's go to this one really quick. Mission Limited said, well, he says, thanks for saving money. I will try and pair it with the put. Yeah, you can put some of that 60 cents you save, Mr. Unlimited, to, uh, toward the notion of buying uh, some downside in VIX, and you got a nice trade that has a little bit of action in both directions. And then, of course, watch, you'll do that, and VIX will sit here for the next two months. But I joke here. Uh, let's go really quickly. Since we're talking levered ETFs, so let's go to Rhythmic Angel. He says, options on the levered ETF SOXL. He says, what do you guys think of this? He says, options. So there are levered ETF in an ETF. Do they have a propensity to go negative? And do the prices of the options on them move similar to the underlying? Well, SOXL is not one I really trade a lot. This is a 3X semiconductor levered ETP here. This is trying to obviously mimic 3X the movement of the Philly Semiconductor Sector Index. And let's see here. This actually does some paper. It averages about 23,000 contracts a day. So... It actually does some paper, trading about $42.50 right now. Mr. Uncle Mike, maybe we'll start with you. This is an issue people have bumped into in the past. I know the options brokers kind of got burned on it back in the day, allowing options, full options leverage on levered ETPs. They have since dialed that back because they realized that was kind of giving leverage on leverage. But, I mean, A, if you have any thoughts on this SOXL, have at it. But, B, I think more salient, do you also have any thoughts just in general on the use case or perhaps lack thereof for trading options on an already levered product? I'm not a fan of levered products. I think that levered products like uh, single stock futures are a great solution from where there was no problem. And so uh, I'm not a fan. If you want to leverage yourself, use options and futures. And if you say those are too complicated, then all you, and, and you like the levered ETFs better then what you're doing is you're buying a, something that's actually more complicated that appears more simple than it actually is, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, like it shouldn't, just stay away from them. I, I'm not a fan of them. If, unless you can figure out some type of way with which to create some type of benefit on things that are predictably crappy, like what Mark and Andrew talk about on um, some of the Vol products, then I don't think there's really a spot for them. There's definitely not a spot for them in anything that I do. Mr. Rocklaus, if anything to add on using options on levered ETPs, have at it. And then Luigi has clarified a little bit. He says he saw it in one of, in one of the option pit videos. I'm guessing if it's a, maybe Airbnb swap, maybe the meatball maybe was uh, guilty for that one. It doesn't sound like an Andrew trade to me. He says he sold the 150s and Airbnb is around 149 and a half right now. He sold the 150s this week. He bought two each of the 142 puts and the 157 half calls in the following week. 130 plus volatility in the front week, 59 vol behind it. Total delta is around a seven. Uh, so a little bit of a uh, of a time trade there as well, Mr. Rob Lobster. If anything to add on either of those, options on levered ETPs or Luigi's strangle swap, or I should say straddle swap, as he puts it, in Airbnb that he claims he got from you. <laughs> um. As far as the levered ETPs, I think, you know, Mike said it all. I just, you have to know where you're trading um, because there's a lot of weirdness going on. Um, as far as uh, the Airbnb trade, I'm still trying to remember it, but my head's a little fuzzy. So I wish I could help him a little more, but it, it sounds more like a mark trade or maybe something one of my students wanted to put together. So it definitely does not sound like a rock lobster trade. For me here, let's look really quickly. Let's go out here. Another uh, one of our YouTube listeners, BZ Tokyo. He loves chiming in on our shows. He said he's talking about the last one we just did with Andre the Giant on Monday, the Land of the Giants episode. He says he finds it interesting that huge gains in option volume come in or around the Sanderson Farm chicken takeover news. 
Um, oh, yeah, so we're talking about the one that had uh, the celestial teas, I think, in seasonings. He said, maybe did not know that tea company is into chickens, but interesting timing. Uh, I say regarding ye old support.com. Yeah, that was the, from the show before he commented. He must love support.com because we talked about that a couple of shows ago. He says, they're a leader in customer and technical support solutions delivered by home based employees. Uh, today announced new service offerings to bring reliable and 24 7 on demand customer support to emerging fintech leaders, cryptocurrency, and NFT platforms, exchanges, and wallet OEMs. He says, like that old Transformers line, more than meets the eye. Well, he always knows how to get to get my attention. He throws in some 80s references in there. So there you go. I learned more about support.com. Thank you, BZ Tokyo, as we keep on rolling and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, welcome to Around the Block, listeners. And if I was on my A game, I would have played off BZ Tokyo's Transformers line and said it's time for the Autobots to roll out. But I missed that one, listeners, and I will forever regret it. Instead, let's go around the horn. Let's go out to Uncle Mike first. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week into the weekend? S&P 500, new all-time highs, uh, seeing if we can hone in on the 4,500 mark. Um, <clears throat> also watching the 10-year and just seeing if we can do anything in financials, if we can get another leg up there. And uh, oil's pulled back a little bit, uh, or the energy stocks, I should say, and seeing if we can get some type of a bid caught there. If you like all that stuff, including uh, the energy side and oil in particular, stay tuned for Trifo coming up in exactly half an hour. Pretty much listeners are going to break it all down. All the action, all the movers and shakers in the world of commodities and your rates and your equities, all that fun stuff. Ags, metals, you name it. Energy, a whole bunch more. Tune in to Twifo so you can hear that for yourselves. And Mr. Rock Lobster, we're not out there slinging straddle swaps and or options on levered ETPs. What are you keeping an eye on into the weekend, sir? Well, I think we uh, we could have a 15 close in VIX. The ball's coming in. It, it seems like all these cross currents, uh, like weird government spending, uh, there seems to be a little bit of implosion now in Washington. So we'll see if nothing really gets done. Um, <clears throat> but the market keeps chugging higher. But you said don't you don't fight the Fed. So right now um, they're pretty. Uh, I, I I just I just look at it and uh, I just you know you see higher stock prices. Uh, commodity stuff has softened a little bit, like Mike said. Um, but uh, and that is kind of I think it. Should be end up being a quiet week, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see a, a relative low for VIX and another new high tomorrow just because, hey, it's another day with a Y. Another day with a Y indeed. Unfortunately, listeners, that music means we come to the end of this epic pirates plunder raid <laughs> out there in the land of St. Charles. where the, Again, sitting on mass amounts of pirate riches. You want to go check out the town? That is wealthy beyond its means, stcharleswealth.com. While you're there, you can also check out ye old Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks head over to stcharleswealth.com or perhaps follow you on Twitter at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W, what will they find, sir? You will find a lot of content. I, I give video updates. I've been doing that lately. Uh, you will find a blog that I post on Twitter or that I share on Twitter uh, probably about once a week. Uh, it's an extension of the strategy block. So I put out a lot of content. And uh, if you are looking for a financial advisor who frequently uses the option product, if indeed it's appropriate, feel free to reach out to me, uh, stcharleswealth.com. There you go, stcharleswealth.com, the place to go. Mr. Rock Lobster, you can be forgiven for not remembering. I think COVID may be making your brain a little fuzzy because Luigi says you you actually made this video on Straddle Swaps about two years ago. <laughs> so a bit of an oldie but a goodie, it sounds like. And then uh, if folks want to check out the videos you're doing right now, maybe this capital gains thing, uh, where should they go? What should they do? Two years ago, I thought it was last week. I'm like, I don't remember doing anything last week. <laughs> Two years ago, what the hell? Anyway, uh, hey, that means your stuff still has resonance to it. Still, still has a life. Oh yeah, you know, it's still all our, all the old videos. People, uh, students still go back to the archives and watch them. Um, um, it's all technique, you know. Um, so capital gains, uh, yeah, we launched that product. Oh my gosh, we're like totally thrilled. People like it. Um, 
it's getting it's just getting off the ground so we have a couple wins and you know and we're on our way so yeah go to optionpit.com uh capital gains and it's basically teaching how to trade and sort of manage your own option hedge fund that's that's what the uh skill you're going to acquire I just want to know if I can beat my local senator and congressman. If I can do that and rub their faces in it, Mr. Rock Lobster, then I'm on board. I tell you what, it's, I, I think there's some things that, he, I, that I, even I can't do. <laughs> yes. So it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to beat that, you know. Why don't you just buy like 500 calls? Oh, folks aren't coming to you and or your significant others and saying, hey, I'm going to merge with this company tomorrow. You should buy some. They're not giving you that info, sir. Uh, not yet <laughs> not yet but someday soon check it out over there optionpit.com while we allow the the rock lobster to go rest his fog addled brain but don't worry listeners you don't have to rest you can go get a beverage if you want though i had a, a little bathroom break we'll put some fun stuff in between i said brian's on vacation so there's no live opr today so we went a little above and beyond it's kind of fun we went back and we found the episode 100 spectacular that we did for all things all things OPR, and we cut them all together. It was five episodes. We cut them together. It's got great special guests on it. You get to listen to some early days of OPR. I know a lot of you have joined the network since episode 100 of OPR, so it's probably new to you. We'll give you a little taste of it here in between, and we'll be back in exactly 25 minutes to break down the world of futures options on TWIFO, and then back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 